Hey guys, I recently bought this 96 Ford E350 Club Wagon and I'm going to be doing a budget camper van build. And the thing about doing a budget build is that you're going to save a lot of money, but you're going to really have to bootstrap and do a lot of hard work and learn a lot of new skills as well. I'm an automotive technician, so you know, getting this thing fixed up isn't gonna be too hard, and I'm just gonna make a lot of videos on kind of the stuff I'm doing, and hopefully it helps you guys too, but uh, obviously this has a busted out rear window, so let's go ahead and see how cheaply we can fix it for. Fortunately, I live right down the street from a really cool pull and pay junkyard, and they had uh, about six of these Ecoline vans, and I got a rear glass out of another club wagon, and it has the factory tint as well. I kept all the hardware with it and I only paid about $12 for it. And once I got it home, I uh, popped the little bolts out of it. These little guys, there's actually five of them for each window. I separated the sandwich plate and then I needed to get all of the old butyl tape off. And that stuff is such a pain and it takes a long time. Um, you can use Goo Gone and actually what I found is a heat gun. Uh, works the best, but I didn't do that to get it off the window at first um, I just used a bunch of goo gone and a lot of paper towels and Really tried to get that stuff off of there and I used one of those trim tools uh, Plastic razor blade would have worked a lot better I finally got all the butyl tape off the window and then I just cleaned it up with Windex and actually put some window polish on it to see how Clean I could get it and it's got a few little scratches um, actually in the glass but it's really not too bad you can't beat the price then I tried to remove as much butyl tape from the sandwich adapter as I possibly could um, I definitely used the heat gun and that helped quite a bit to kind of scrape it out of those little channels and then just lots of goo gone and elbow grease and fortunately this adapter didn't come apart uh, some of them might break into pieces but this one seems pretty sturdy so I don't have a problem reusing it and you can also get a new one of these for about 25 bucks I'm not sure if it comes with the butyl tape already installed or you have to put that on as well there's still a little bit of that butyl rubber that just refused to come off but the main part is to get all the dirt off of there so the new stuff will stick. I actually have a little bit of butyl tape that I used for one of my other vehicles when I resealed the moisture barriers and this stuff is a, probably just a little bit thicker than you need so uh, you'll be able to stretch it out just a little bit. All right now it's time to prepare the glass so go ahead and push the bolt studs through each of uh, the five holes. Once they're through, I'll apply a little bit of butyl tape around the inside um, just to keep any water out. Uh, they have like little rubber seals on them, but they might be a little old, so I don't know how well they'll seal. But that butyl tape should work pretty well to keep the water out. Next, figure out which side goes down on the glass, and I'll apply the butyl tape all the way around, kind of where the old one used to be. And I'll stretch it out just a little bit to make sure there's still enough, but there's not too much. Once that butyl tape is on, I'll go ahead and clean the glass with an alcohol prep pad, and then I'll hit the new butyl tape in the window a little bit with the heat gun. Making sure the holes line up, I will slide the sandwich plate on and press it against the glass. And press the bolts through the sandwich adapter. Before I put butyl rubber on the top part of the sandwich adapter, I'll go ahead and move over to the van and pull off the old bags and tape that's covering the window. Using a plastic trim tool, I'll just pop off the inner trim around the window. Remove the five nuts that hold the window on, and then I'll use that plastic trim tool to lightly pry off what's left of the window. Remove any of the left behind butyl rubber on the window frame. And I finally got some plastic razor blades, and they work super well if you blast it with a heat gun first. I'll get the very last of it off with some Goo Gone and paper towels. This door around the window area has a good amount of peeling paint, so I'm going to use some sandpaper to sand down to bare metal uh, just where the paint is peeling. 
and the part where the butyl rubber goes, uh, there's just a few little spots around the bolt holes that need to be sanded down. Once I get all the peeling paint sanded down and everything is smooth, I'll go ahead and add a covering behind where the window goes to keep any paint out of the car. And then I'll hit everything with some painting prep and paper towels. I'll go ahead and use some masking tape to cover the contact area where the butyl rubber meets the window frame. And I'm doing this because I trust the factory paint because it's done so well. However, I will leave little gaps to where the paint was peeling off um, so I can paint just those small little sections. Next, I'll spray the sanded parts with a few coats of self-etching primer. Once it was all dry, I removed all the masking tape and scuffed everything up with some sandpaper and then cleaned it up again and applied some more masking tape, but this time covering all of the window frame. I cleaned everything up with some tack cloth and now we're ready to paint. And I couldn't find an exact match for this van. Um, I think it's glacier white, but I was only able to find polar white. But it should be fairly close and I'm not too worried because I'm gonna be repainting this entire van anyways. So this is just temporary. I also applied some clear coat as well. I'll go ahead and clean up both of the contact areas with an alcohol prep pad and then I'll apply butyl rubber to the outside of the sandwich adapter. Then I'll slightly warm up both contact areas with a heat gun and carefully install the window onto the frame, making sure all the bolts go through the holes. And then I'll put on all of the nuts and evenly snug them up. And I'll wait on the trim clips for now. I can always install those later. It's also not a bad idea to let the van sit in the sun for a little while so that butyl rubber can get seated in properly. And you may want to recheck the nuts to make sure they're still snug. All right, guys, the window is replaced. It's not leaking or anything. However, one thing I would probably do different is uh, temporarily insert screws into these bottom parts, uh, just because this has kind of popped up a little bit. Like if you look at the, the other door, it's more, more flush. But I may be able to fix that just by kind of loosening things up a little bit and pushing that down on like a really hot day or something like that and maybe inserting some screws. And also another thing to consider is that you can actually uh, probably retrofit a uh, pop-out window. If you like found one at the junkyard that has a rear window popper, it has the holes for it and the little cutouts right here for the actual window popper, like the ones on the front, because that'd be pretty sweet on a camper build to have that, to have this in the back. One thing I want to do is try to figure out a way to make a bug screen on this so I can open it in the summertime and not worry about like mosquitoes and flies getting in. But anyways guys, I hope you have found this somewhat useful. I'm kind of learning as I go. I don't know everything, but I like learning new skills. Anyways, uh, I will definitely have a lot more videos on my van build and it should be pretty sweet. But uh, I will catch you guys later. Peace out.